A woman did not know what to do about her two troublesome boys. Her neighbor said she had a boy like that, and she took him to her pastor, a parish priest, and that solved the problem. The mother of the two boys said, "I am not Catholic. I am not even religious, but I will try anything for my boys." The first boy was taken to the priest's office, and the priest said, "Where is God?" The boy rolled his eyes and said nothing. Again, the priest asked, raising his voice, "Where is God?" Still, the boy rolled his eyes and said nothing. The priest asked the same question for the third time, raising his voice more than before. The boy jumped from his seat, ran out of the priest's office, and said to his brother who was waiting outside, "Let's get out of here now. God is missing, and they think we are responsible for it." In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As far back in history as we can think of, human beings have believed in the existence of divine beings. Some of them are considered to be friendly, while others are considered to be vicious and unfriendly. Different forms of worship have also been developed. To please those divine beings that are friendly, and to protect human beings from the hostile ones, there are also other forms of worship. Some cultures practice polytheism and have as many as hundreds of gods. An attempt to please one god sometimes results in displeasing others. Three major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, look up to Abraham as patriarch and as the one who championed the break from the worship of many gods, thereby giving room for the worship of one god. The belief in one god is very central to Islam, and it is expressed in the Shahada, that is, the Islamic creed or testimony. As follows: La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. I bear witness that there is no god but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is God's messenger. The Jews, as descendants of Abraham, also take the worship of the God of Abraham as central in their life. Even though along the line. They were tempted into the worship of pagan gods. Primarily, they committed to the worship of the God of Abraham. There are stories in the Hebrew Scriptures, like in the book of Daniel and in the book of Maccabees, of how Jews were ready to die rather than worship pagan gods. Today's first reading from the book of Deuteronomy is an instruction from Moses on the worship. Of the God of Abraham, for the Jews, the Shema reads, "Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God; the Lord is one." Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Edad. The loyalty to the worship of the one God played a very significant role in the controversies. That erupted between the Jews and Jesus Christ, which eventually ended in his crucifixion. He was accused of blasphemy. They shouted, "This man must die because he claimed to be God." They saw Jesus as a major challenge to their belief in God. His words, his teachings, and actions pointed to his divinity. He forgave sins, something that was reserved for God. He healed the sick, he raised the dead, he cast out demons, and he called God by the intimate name Abba, a term only a son 
our daughter could use. For about 300 years after the resurrection of Jesus from the dead, his followers continued to battle over the divinity of Jesus, whether he is Son of God, one in being, one in substance with the Father, or whether he was just a unique person. It was at the castle of Nicaea in 325 AD, after many heresies, after many wars and bloodshed, that it was officially declared that Jesus is one in essence with God the Father, that Jesus is God from God, but not the same person as the Father. The Nicene Creed came as a fruit of this council. But that was not the end of the journey. In 381 AD, there was the First Council of Constantinople. This council confirmed the Nicene Creed, and it jettisoned the teachings of the Macedonians, who denied the divinity of the Holy Spirit. Also, as an outcome of this council, the Nicene Creed was expanded to produce the Niceno Constantinopolitan Creed, which is the Nicene Creed, plus two more articles, namely, an article on the Holy Spirit, which, says, which describes him as the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and who spoke through the prophets. And also an article about the church, the baptism and the resurrection of the dead. This is by no means an attempt to explain how the mystery of the Trinity came into existence. It is rather an attempt to explain how the revelation and the understanding of the revelation came about. God does not change. God has no beginning. But we grow in our understanding of God. God has always been one and always three persons in one God. From the very beginning of the Bible, we see the three persons in one God at work. For example, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, God the Father created the heavens and the earth. In the next verse, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, the Holy Spirit was hovering over the face of the waters. While in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, the word of God, who is Jesus, was spoken to bring about creation. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God said, Let us make man in our own image and likeness. This certainly was a conversation among the three persons in one God. In Genesis chapter 18, God appeared to Abraham in the form of three men. And the most unambiguous expression of the doctrine on the Blessed Trinity in the New Testament is found in today's Gospel passage. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This comes up at the end of Matthew's account of the Gospel. The end of the Gospel, according to Matthew, takes us to its beginning. In the opening chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew, we received the promise of the child to be born, who will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And at the end of his earthly mission, before his ascension, Jesus reassures his followers, saying, I will be with you always, until the end of the age. While the gospel is ending, the disciples are only beginning their world mission in the name of the Blessed Trinity. The world which was created as a reflection of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is to return to its origin through the preaching of the gospel and the sacraments. Our take home from the doctrine on the Blessed Trinity is that God is not a lonely old man sitting up there in heaven and not interested in us. God is a family. God is a relationship. God is the model of unity and communion for all people. In Him, there are three distinct persons, 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, yet one in divinity. We do not need to be exactly the same to be able to get along as modeled by the Trinity. We can bring our individuality together as treasures to enrich our community. And so, my dearly beloved in Christ, we continue our worship today as we give glory to God the Father, through Jesus Christ, His Son, our Lord, and in communion with the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.